There's the guy that uh, the NBA world was talking about on Saturday night, Derek White, who hit the game winner as the Boston Celtics stayed alive and forced a game seven against Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat, who hit the road now after taking a 3-0 lead and will try to punch their ticket against Jason Tatum and the Celtics. See what he's wearing? Anything is possible. Kevin Garnett channeling uh, KG. And here we are at TD Garden. Game seven on the horizon an hour from now here on TNT. And it's, uh, man, it's our last, it's our last show of the year. Thank goodness. Thank what? goodness. Thank goodness. This is I great like basketball. summer vacation. <laughs> this is yeah, great but basketball. You, but you also, <laughs> hey, I love basketball, but I love summer vacation more. But you I ain't going to get on here and lie. So, so what are what are two greater words, game seven or summer vacation? Summer, summer vacation. vacation. Oh. Game summer seven. vacation. Summer vacation. Hey, and, hey, and the last thing. And I'm I got say, another word for you. Bahamas. Buzz. Hey, Shaq, <laughs> I'm going to say, I love you guys. See you in October. Yep. <laughs> that's, so, the, that's the su two sweetest words. Three words, see ya, in our, that's four actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No math involved. Uh, game number 148 in terms of game sevens in NBA history. Uh, the third of this postseason, uh, Golden State winning at Sacramento when Steph Curry went for 50. Jason Tatum and the Celtics here against the Sixers when Tatum went for 51. And now we have another one. First game seven, by the way, way back in 1948, Philadelphia Warriors beat the St. Louis Bombers 85 to 46. Jumping Joe Folks at 15. But how did we get here? We got here with this play. Shaq. We got here with this play. 0.2 seconds. A lot of talk. Of, you know, Eric Spoelstra should have, you know, had Struess find this man earlier, or you know, not double Jason Tatum. But that's getting here hear no there. 0.2 seconds. Got a double Jason. I want to know after this demoralizing <laughs> loss, will the Heat be able to bounce back? That's really. You know, it's so funny. I hear people talking about that play right there. By the way, by the way, this this reaction from uh, from Celtic fans was one thing. This reaction from Heat fans at a wedding reception was another. See, everybody thought they won. They Ernie. thought they, they thought they had won it. I love it. They bring out the Miami Heat banner. They're running around the ballroom with that. That's, 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 that's and then, hilarious. And then reality set in, and it was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh my God! Look at it. Look at this fool right here. That's all, oh my God! Oh man! That takes us to a Carmax one-on-one -on -one. in the NHL. It's happened four times, coming back from a three-nothing deficit. Never happened in the NBA. It's happened once in Major League Baseball, and that was uh, the Boston Red Sox beating the Yankees uh, in a Game 7. The Bruins part of that in the NHL, losing to the Philadelphia Flyers. But what were you saying, Chuckster, about, uh, about that play? Yeah, it's, it's always interesting to me when people who actually don't know anything about basketball voice their opinion. They're called fans. I, I actually listened to a guy's argue about that last play and they were like, I can't believe. First of all, you want to take the ball out of Jason Tatum's hands. So that was actually like, I'm glad the Spolster defended Struess. Yeah. But the second thing about that play, he had to jump out the way or he could have fouled Marcus Smart. So it was actually, Point. it was a perfect, just a, a fluky thing. He did the perfect situation nope. on stopping the ball from Tatum. But he was going to run into Michael, Marcus Smart if he didn't jump out the way. And that, but I say it was just a perfect bounce. So and Max because he didn't hit Marcus, he was 0.2 seconds late. Yeah, and but the thing is, yeah. that had not a hey, exposure. I'm glad he defended Max Drews because any fan thinks that was his fault for not boxing out, just don't know anything about basketball. Well, as you know, I'm a I'm a New York fan. And is I'm that why you're wearing the Yankee pins? No, it's, it's Memorial Day, red, white, and blue. All right. You know, oh, I got you. you know, red, white, and blue. But I, I you know, <laughs> in 2004, the Yankees. And now when I saw A-Rod and Street, uh, uh, Jeter at the game, you know, they were the ones who lost. So I asked A-Rod, I'm like, yo, how did that, how, when, you, when you lost that game seven, how did that affect you? Or would it affect you? He said, Kenny, for five years, like that's what we carried on our back, the team that lost, until we won it again in 209. So, this is an historical moment for a lot of people because I'm the, here's one of the greatest baseball players ever. And he felt, he said, I was carrying a loser mentality on my back.
for five years because everywhere everyone went saw me there. Oh, there's the guy who lost yeah. game seven and was up 3-0. 150 and 0 in the NBA when the team has a three nothing lead. 151st time it's happened. Here it is the Boston Celtics and Miami Heat and we'll see if Boston can pull it off tonight. Uh, let's take a short break from from our commentary and listen to Ali LaForce who as always as she's done every game of this series sets the table for us. Ali what you got. Hey EJ well just to add to the conversation about the 2004 Boston Red Sox I spoke with Terry Francona and I said here we are again with Boston a chance to come back after being down 0 3 and win a game seven. I believe you were the manager there team. You said yes I was and I asked him I said do you remember what it felt like and he said I was just happy to be there. And it made me think when we talked to Eric Spolster after beating the Chicago Bulls in the second play in game that was his mindset. He was relieved he was a weight was lifted off his shoulders and he kept talking about gratitude and being thankful for being there. But the Eric Spolster that we talked to just moments ago while he maintained the gratitude it was more of we're ready to fight. Let's do this. We heard him after game six. Let's tip it right now. I heard him after shoot around tell me today. Let's just get this thing going and tip it right now. I have a bunch of fighters. I know they're ready to play. And so it shifted a little bit more from gratitude to we're going to win this game and I feel confident. This has been the most unpredictable series of the postseason and one line that sort of sums that up is Duncan Robinson is leading all scorers in the fourth quarter. And yes that's even taking into consideration that he missed the two big three pointers in the fourth quarter of, of, last, of game six. We're all evened up here. The last 32 meetings between these two teams, the record is 16 and 16. Both teams have had to win three in a row. Both teams have been blown out and won in blowout fashion, and they both give me the impression that they feel confident they're going to win this game tonight. For the Celtics, it's about playing free, mentally letting go and trusting the camaraderie, the faith, and the brotherhood that they have created together. This roster has been together a long time. It's about trust for them. Marcus Smart said we cannot play to lose. We have to play to win. We have to be freer than ever before. Listen they've been great in game sevens 22 and five in fact and the bottom line is they haven't been great closing out games. They were outscored in game six in the fourth quarter and they were outscored in clutch. That cannot happen here tonight if they want to win. For Miami the faith comes in two things. Number one they've been through a lot of adversity this season and number two their shooting percentage last game was the worst since October and they were still within three seconds of winning that game. They know they can do it. Coach said I have a bunch of fighters and when you're in a game seven that's what you want and I trust in my team. Both teams are ready to go. Malcolm Brogdon is going to play tonight by the way for the Celtics. He was at shoot around got shots up didn't have a brace on the elbow and I talked to coach Missoula. He said if he tells me he's ready to go I know it won't hurt this team because he cares so much about winning that if he was going to have a negative impact in any way on this game he would not have said he was good to go. Ali LaForce thank you very much and uh, <clears throat> excuse me as we continue uh, think back a year ago the matchup in the Eastern Conference Finals these same two teams who had to go seven games that game seven was in Miami and it was Jimmy Butler trying to give Miami the lead with 16 seconds to go in the game off the mark with the three pointer Celtics would salt it away at the free throw line and win it 100 to 96 to go on to the finals and here we are again another game seven this time it's in Boston so how do how do both teams respond to what happened in game six. You know I'm wondering after such a demoralizing loss can the Miami Heat bounce back uh, Celtics are happy game seven home at our place you know but I, I agree with Chuck I don't know which team's going to show up I have no idea who's going to win this game however Boston has to come out get the fans involved play well play with that enthusiasm and they can't think about losing the game Marcus Smart makes a great point can't think about losing the game in Miami they have to come let Boston know hey we're trying to win take the fans out of the game and they may have a shot but I have no I've been trying to think about it all day I was like yeah. I don't know how I will react if I have to lose and not 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 two seconds point two seconds point, point one two seconds well, well what's interesting the Celtics, it was a buzzer beater there's no time yes, left yes the, the Celtics part is easy they got game seven home come back and three zip the crowd gonna be going crazy they got a second lease on life now I agree with Shaq. I don't know how Miami gets off the floor from that devastating. First of all, they 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 way past standing eight. <laughs> My man is still counting. They they on nine right now. I don't know if they can get up. And to me, it's all about mental. Uh, like I say, it's and it's easy. Hey, we can all go to the podium. We can all talk in the microphone saying, 
We're going to win game seven. We're going to be ready for game seven. But every loss is, all losses aren't created equal. That was a devastating loss. My question is going to be, how much gas Jimmy Butler got left in the tank? Because for me, it's hard to score 30 points a night. He did it, but he's not used to doing that. He did it in the first 12 games, as yeah, but, you saw there. But that's yeah, what I'm saying. I'm saying. He, I think he might be out of gas. Because, you know, if you are like, if you used to doing that every single night during the regular season, you kind of build up that endurance, that endurance, that endurance. And then when the playoffs come, you get a new fresh lease. And then adrenaline gets you going. I personally think he might be out of gas. Played 47 minutes in game six. Well, I, I think if you're, we'll go Miami. If you're Miami and you're individually, I, I don't think Jimmy Butler should kind of come into the mentality of, I'm going to win this game for us. I heard him say that at the podium, that I didn't play well. It was my fault. I, I don't look at, this is me personally, I don't look at um, Jimmy as the same breath as the late, great Kobe Bryant or D. Wade. Guys who are, who like Charles says, who are consistently getting 30 points during the regular season. Jimmy is a closer. He is a great closer, but he needs some middle relief pitching. We talk with Ali about baseball. We stand on baseball. He needs middle relief pitching, and that's Struess, that's Gabe Vincent, and that's Caleb Martin and Lowry. They have to get him there, and if those guys don't play well, he doesn't have the gas because that is not his strong suit. The strong suit for Jimmy Butler is that he's one of the best all-around players in basketball, not one of the best scorers in basketball. Yeah, he's a but defender, Kennedy. he's a scorer, yep. he's a rebounder, and that takes Go ahead, energy. Go ahead, Shaq. Yeah, but Kenny, to add on to that, he has to come out the box and play well, so, so Boston takes notice because if he's not playing well, the other guys won't have the opportunity to play well. But they got him there last game. Those other guys, Gabe Vincent and, and Caleb Martin, got him there. That's because Jimmy was, able was to aggressive. Jimmy. At the end, to close yeah, it but, out. But see, I'm not, I've never been, I'm not going to compare Jimmy to Kobe, Dwayne Wade. But on this team, he's that guy. Every team has a best player and a second best player. Your best players have to play well. Listen, Struess, uh, Benson. How about Bam Adebayo? Bam, but no, no, but I'm getting ready to say, all those guys, they are complimentary players. They're all, all good those. players. But Bam and Jimmy have to play great. Your best players have to play well. That, and, and listen, those other guys, they got Caleb. Caleb's been the best player for Miami in this entire series. But Bam and Jimmy going to have to lead the way. They're going to have to do, quote, unquote, the heavy lifting. Especially Bam. He's been missing a lot of chippies around the rim. I don't like guys that are 6'9", 6'10", not getting double. Come on, man. You can't get 12, 12 yeah, points. Two, two, yeah, 12 points. 12, 12, 12 points ain't going to get, get it done. done. Yeah, it, it wouldn't get it done if it was you. But if it's Bam out of uh, but he, he, he's the guy, he, can't he, he stop he, it, Kenny? He's, he's not that, that guy. No, like he's just that. averaged 18 and went down to 12. What but, you mean he's not eight, the guy? 18 is not Shaq-like numbers. No, he's Shaq-like. No, Shaq -like. but he's Shaq on he's, this he's team. that guy. I'm 18 not is not Shaq on this team. No, but I'm saying, you're not paying attention, Kenny. You're trying to defend role players. And I understand that. We're just I'm saying. not defending. Yeah, I'm, yeah, def yes, I'm yeah. saying what the I, Miami Heat no, is. No, no, no. I'm the saying Miami the Heat. Boston Celtics. No, no. If, if, hey. if, if Brown and Tatum don't play well, they lose. Those hey. guys are not Brown and Tatum. Bro, they are for the Miami Heat. They are for the Miami Heat. 18 to 12, you can't get it down. Okay. Not for three straight games. That's what I'm saying. Meantime, players still warming up. And here's what happened a short time ago when Derek White, off of that game six, I'm sitting here watching, I hear this roar go up before it's this filled, and it's because he's come out just to take up some tick, some uh, some warm-up jumpers. So that gives you an indication of of the, the status that Derek White enjoys now, and I had a chance to speak with him right after that happened. Hey, Derek, uh, when was the last time you walked out an hour before game to get up some shots and you had people roaring for you? Uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. The fans here are amazing, and they always show love. So tell me, 
how life has changed in the last 48 hours since the shot in Miami? Uh, I mean, I got a lot of text messages, uh, a lot of people congratulating me. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty much the same. How many of those have you responded to? Was most of Sunday spe uh, spent getting back to everybody who's been hitting you up? Uh, yeah, uh, I try to hit the, the people that have been there for me uh, most throughout this whole time, and um, a lot of love. Hey, look, there was a lot going on in that play to happen in three seconds. How many times have you watched it back? Uh, yeah, I watched it a lot. Um, I mean, it was everywhere, so um, just watched it a couple times, and what stands out about it, about how that play developed and what do you when you watch it time and again are you looking at different players and what everybody was doing at that time what stands out to you um, I mean I was, I was inbound in this so I uh, had a pretty good view of what was all going on and um, I remember telling the guys before the uh, huddle broke that three seconds is a lot of time so uh, a smart shot at just try to get in position so here you stand before Game Seven, and you've uh, you're on the brink of making history. Um, so what's the mindset, and how do you stay as hungry as you were in Games Four through Six? I mean, our, our back's still against the wall. Um, we know that we lose, we're going home. Miami's going to be ready tonight, so we gotta do whatever it takes to win. Derek White, we appreciate the time. We wish you the best tonight in Game 7. Thanks a lot for spending a couple of minutes with us, man. Appreciate you. Got you. So that, uh, that play in Game 6 that gave the Celtics the win, one of those Celtic moments that will go down in their playoff history. Not, a, not if they lose tonight, they won't. Uh, but right now it <laughs> no, does. They, it depends on what happens tonight. <laughs> it goes up with these yeah. right now. Hi,